Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for watching. So in this video, we're going to talk about the benefits of exercise and the gut microbiome. So a lot of content looks at the effect of diet on the gut microbiome. I think this video will be enlightening in that we're going to look at the effects of exercise. So there's a study that just came out that looked at elite runners. And what they found was they had a higher uh, amount of this gut bacteria called valinella. And so what this gut bacteria does is it consumes lactate. Now, initially, the researchers speculated or they, or they hypothesized that this gut bacteria can act as a lactate sink. In other words, it can help to manage or to regulate the lactate levels, right? Because when lactate accumulates, what that means is, is that we're not processing it effectively. So it accumulates and it's associated with fatigue. So essentially, what they, that was what they hypothesized. But what they really found was that the, the gut bacteria would, would consume this lactate as a fuel source. In other words, the lactate that, that or, or what, what's commonly referred to as it's lactate, but I'm really talking about basically lactic acid, what we refer to as that burning sensation on the muscles. So what they found was that this bacteria would consume the lactic acid as, as food, and they would in return produce a short chain fatty acid known as propionate. And propionate has been shown to boost performance. So I thought that was really remarkable. Um, and it shows this, the symbiotic relationship in terms of exercise. So in other words, when we, when we produce lactate, and this can kind of be kind of hypothesized or theorized in, in regards to when we work out, when we produce lactate, we could be potentially um, facilitating the colonization. And because this, this valinella is not the only lactate-consuming bacteria, there are many other strains um, that, uh, that, we're, that we know about. We're also we're still learning. But essentially when we produce lactate when we become better at processing it, because there's many ways to process it. One of the ways is the bicarbonate buffering system. The other way is, is the Cori cycle. In other words, the lactate we produce can either get used up by the muscle as a fuel, it can get buffered by bicarbonate, and it can also get sent to the liver via the Cori cycle, and the liver can process it back in, as glucose, and it sends it out to be a fuel for the muscle. Now we have a potential fourth way, and this is lactate-consuming bacteria. They can actually act to um, to basically it could support the Cori cycle, uh, give a buffering boost, if you will, because now some of that lactate is being taken up by the gut bacteria and as a symbiotic, uh, you know, token of appreciation, they're going to release, they're going to produce propionate, which can help boost performance. And not to mention research has shown that propionate can also help with fat oxidation. And this is all connected to basically sustaining um, endurance performance, right? So we're, we're kind of, we're, we're having some glycogen sparing there in regards to being better fat burners, right? As well as buffering lactate effectively. So, uh, so let's go ahead and move on to some of the other uh, benefits. So there was research that looked at sedentary individuals and fit individuals, and they find that fitter individuals have higher levels of butyrate, which is another short chain fatty acid that the gut microbiome produces. They also had higher levels of Acromancia, uh, hopefully I pronounced that correct, correctly. That was actually a short chain. That was actually a bacteria, a gut bacteria that I actually uh, talked about, or at least I referenced in my Denver Day Two video in the gut microbiome. It's actually been shown to have anti-diabetic as well as anti-obesity uh, benefits. And here's something truly remarkable. So they actually looked at VO2 peak. Uh, they looked at essentially that's like the gold standard uh, of cardiorespiratory fitness. Uh, or fitness level as well. And they find that it was correlated with gut microbial diversity. So the fitter we are, it's shown that it's gonna be associated with better gut microbial diversity, which is beneficial in many ways. And they, they found this benefit even when they accounted for body mass index, diet, and age. So that just shows the power of fitness. Uh, so let me repeat that, even when they accounted for diet. So that's really amazing because it shows that exercise can have an independent beneficial effect on the gut microbiome. Now, you may be hearing this here first, and if that's the case, I'm glad that I'm able to bring this to you because I truly find it remarkable. And I think exercise is a very undersold um, activity. I think that for, it, it seems that a lot of emphasis is, and diet, I understand it, it's catchy, it's trendy, and obviously it's important. But I think exercise really gets undersold, and I think many can agree that it's, it's, it's very important. And um, so I just, that's why I wanted to sh make this video. So another benefit that exercise has, it is actually improves gut transit time. Now, me and Dr. Angie talked about this. Dr. Angie is a, a renowned gastroenterologist, and we talked about how when you can improve the transit time, 
uh, and it depends on what segment of the of the digestive tract we're referring to. But when we're referring to the colon, when it gets kind of accelerated, you it, it actually helps to prevent the potential pathogen um, exposure. In other words, it makes a shorter a shorter contact time or opportunity for pathogens to to potentially create problems. So exercise has been known to do that. You know, movement, motion is lotion, right? And the other thing is um, the gut microbiome. It is, when we exercise, it kind of has an effect on potentially um, facilitating more of a leaner phenotype in our gut microbiome. So we may get some benefits in that regard as well. And then lastly, what I want to talk about is appetite regulation. So what's interesting is propionate has been known to increase GLP-1, glu glucagon-like peptide 1. And that has been shown to create appetite suppression. Now, other research has looked at the effects of lactate. So exercise has been shown to, so the information on an exercise and appetite is mixed. And, and, and I think it depends on really the person, but the other thing it depends on is the intensity. So sometimes if the exercise isn't intense enough, it could potentially not have an appetite suppressive effect. And then you have variability within individuals. But what they found was that this study looked at the intensity and they found that higher intensity exercise, and I think many can attest to this, that it does act to suppress appetite. And what they found was that lactate was correlated with appetite suppression, particularly um, reduced levels of ghrelin. I like to think of ghrelin as um, like a gremlin in your stomach. It growls and it's hungry and so forth. So when you, when you reduce ghrelin, you're going to reduce your, your appetite. Um, and so what's fascinating is remember that, that valinella gut bacteria that consumes lactate as fuel and then it in return produces propionate could it be possible that the fact that lactate is associated with appetite suppression could be because the gut bacteria are consuming the lactate and they're releasing propionate which has also been associated with appetite suppression via the the, the glp1 um, increase i think that's a thought-provoking possibility and lastly we're going to talk about the gut microbiome upgrade so there was a fascinating study that showed that fitness, when we exercise, it can boost bacteria that can actually access polyphenols. Now, polyphenols are fairly, fairly they have a fairly low bioavailability. However, they bio, they're they're, have a low bioavailability perhaps early on, like in, in the small intestine as well as the stomach. But when it comes to the large intestine, their bioavailability can be actually boosted by certain strains of gut bacteria. And what I'm saying, what I'm suggesting based on this research is that fitness can actually increase our access to polyphenols. And that could actually boost an, anti an antioxidant environment in our digestive tract, and particularly the colon. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Hopefully this video was very informative for you. And hopefully you learned some things from it, uh, some things that maybe you didn't know of before. Uh, so anyway, other than that, uh, thank you guys for stopping by and uh, tune in next time.